Our family is about to fly nearly 13 hours from New York to Tokyo on ANA's business class. Now the business class product we're flying is called the Room, and a lot of people say it's even better than Qatar Airways Q Suite. We can't wait to take you along as we check out the service, the fully enclosed suites, the extra wide seat, the food, and the overall experience. Now, one thing many people don't realize is that when you fly ANA business class, not every seat is the same. And if you book the wrong type of seat, you'll be paying the same high fare, but you'll get an inferior experience. So if you want to avoid this mistake, keep watching. Also, make sure you stick around to the end because I'll be telling you exactly how much we paid for our tickets. Okay, let's go check in. ANA flies out of Terminal 7 at JFK, which is a rather small and sleepy terminal that we've never set foot in before until today. ANA has a small lounge here for premium passengers. When you enter, the first class section is to the left, while the business class section is to the right. It's a pretty no-frills lounge and not the most aesthetically pleasing. But there are hot food options, so it gets the job done. And there was enough space for Ella to rope Sean into playing dolls with her for a bit. Here's the beautiful Boeing 777 we'll be flying today. What do you think so far about the ANA experience? So the check-in process was really good. All the uh, attendants came out at a certain time and they all bowed and then started the check-in process. I've never seen that ever in my life. We're at the gates here, so if you notice, they're all separate in the gates. One, two, uh, three back there. Everything's super organized, so they made an announcement that the flight is gonna be 10 minutes delayed. Even with a 10 minute delay, everything has been so good so far. As Serge said, the boarding process was very organized and orderly. And before we knew it, we were settling into our seats. Mama! Hey, what do you think so far? I really like it, but this is like a lot of space. It's really wide, right? Yeah, I don't need this much space though. Oh, for your like little body, right? the size of my bed. What do you think so far? It's good. I feel, I feel very low to the ground. So I have to say, the hard product on this flight is absolutely spectacular. We've flown Qatar Airways Q Suite before, which is considered by many to be the world's best business class. But I can see why many travelers think that the seats on ANA's The Room are just as good, if not better, than Q Suite. First of all, the seat is huge. At its widest point, this seat spans 38 inches, which makes it more spacious than even many international first class seats. Also, you get an absolutely enormous 24 inch 4K screen, which makes the in flight entertainment experience really immersive. There's a sliding door and a tall divider between seats, both of which give you a lot of privacy. Serge and I enjoyed our pre departure sparkling wine and got ready for takeoff. Unlike Qatar Airways Q Suite, you won't get pajamas to change into here, but you do get some high quality slippers complete with a carrying bag and a shoehorn. Sadly though, the slippers were, as always, too small for Surge. Okay, so let's look at the amenity kit. So um, the pouch is by Globetrotter, which is a English uh, luxury luggage brand. We have Face Mist by the brand Shiro, and it's yuzu flavored. Also this lip balm, which is also yuzu. We have an eye mask, a toothbrush, earplugs. Before I continue telling you about our flight, let me first explain the layout of the cabin on this Boeing 777. At the very front of the plane is the first class cabin with just two rows of seats. Behind that, there are three different business class cabins for a total of 64 business class seats, all in a one-to-one -one configuration. There's a small two-row mini cabin right behind first class, then a 10-row cabin, followed by a four-row cabin stretching to behind the wing. Behind that, you'll find three rows of premium economy, and the rest of the plane is regular economy. One one thing to know about ANA The Room is that the configuration is staggered, meaning that the seats are in alternating positions in each row. If you'd prefer to be closer to your companion for easy conversation, book the E and F seats in the odd-numbered rows, since these are right next to each other. If you'd prefer a bit more space between you and your companion, book the D and G seats in the even-numbered rows, as these seats are closer to the aisle. If you're flying alone or you just prefer more privacy during your flight, then of course booking a window seat is ideal. But these are again in a staggered configuration, so you need to choose carefully. The A and K seats in the odd-numbered rows are clearly the superior choice here since your seat is far from the aisle right up against the window, while the C and H seats in the even-numbered rows have seats closer to the aisle. On the New York to Tokyo flight, we all sat in the center section. Serge and I were in 9E and 9F, while Sean and Ella were in 8D and 8G. By the way, if you enjoy videos like this about premium air travel, be sure to subscribe. We've got another really interesting business class flight to Asia coming up soon, so you don't want to miss that video. 
video. Also, visit our channel to catch up on our recent flight reviews of Emirates, Qatar Airways Q-Suites, Singapore Airlines, KLM, JetBlue Mint, and more. Okay, let's go through the menu. Um, so you have a nice selection of sake, of course, shochu, and the champagne on board is Castel No. You've got your red wine, white wine, got a little bit of aperitifs and cocktails, whiskey, of course, they've got some Japanese whiskey. So then moving on to the food. So you basically have the choice of going uh, Japanese or European. For the purposes of this review, I'm going to try the Japanese, Serge is going to try the international cuisine, although in reality, we would probably both just go with this. But we kind of want to be able to compare and contrast so you have that information. But then in addition to sort of like the set menu, they also have this order anytime after finishing your first meal menu. So you've got some light dishes, you've got soup, you've got ramen, snacks. So the girls are definitely going to be hitting up the ramen, it's, and it's from Ipudo, which is pretty cool. While we waited for dinner service, Serge and I had some champagne. a, &A serves a cuvee brew reserve from Castelno. The cabin crew brought out an amuse-bouche for us, a cup of edamame and a cup of marinated mushrooms topped with baby tomatoes. Serge is not a fan of mushrooms, so he couldn't appreciate this dish. But I enjoy a good mushroom, so I was quite the happy camper. Serge's starter was scallop and dry-cured pork ham, while mine was a seared tuna and poached squid salad. Serge had a steak with herb caper sauce for his main dish, while my entree was grilled gold-striped amberjack served with rice, miso soup, and pickles. So this is the beef with cauliflower, carrots, and broccoli rob. So what's the deal with broccoli rob? And what's the deal with lampshades? <laughs> yeah. I feel like broccoli rob is like broccoli's like fancy cousin. It's bitter, it's not as good as broccoli, but I guess it looks a little prettier. It's like, ooh. Broccoli Rob. It is overrated. The food overall was excellent. Serge's steak was solid, but if you like Japanese food, I highly recommend ordering from that side of the menu because my fish dish was absolutely phenomenal. The dessert options, on the other hand, were surprisingly basic. An uninspired fruit salad, a cheese plate, or a mini tub of haagen vanilla ice cream. What is up, YouTube? So usually mommy and daddy do these bathroom tour things, but I thought it's wild to shine, so I'm gonna show you the bathroom. So this is the beautiful door, and then this is the sink, and I like these like lights that it has, and then here is toothbrush, um, like, I don't know what that is, it's like a white book. Toothbrush, um, mouthwash, tissues, a changing table, toilet, the cover for the toilet. Um, oh, and here's the toilet paper. <gasps> look, 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 OG! It has a thingy to wash your butt, and it has all the different modes. I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna tell you if it works good. Okay, I used the water thingy and I feel very, very clean. I didn't poop, but I feel very clean. So. I highly recommend using it if you see it. Don't be afraid. And plus, look, you can adjust the pressure, but yeah. After dinner, the cabin crew came around to do turndown service. As you can see, once the seats are in live flat position, the center section suites are somewhat reminiscent of Qatar Airways Q suites. But of course, because the divider is still there, you don't have a true double bed the way you do on Qatar. Here's a demonstration of how the sliding door works. It's actually a two-part mechanism, with one side sliding up and the other side sliding across. It leaves a tiny Tiny bit of a gap, but it's still pretty cozy. And then it was time for us to get some sleep. Halfway through the flight, we got a little hungry, so we tried some selections from the order anytime menu. Serge had the beef curry over rice, which was excellent, and I tried the ramen, which was, oh my god, so good. The girls loved the ramen too. In fact, Ella was so obsessed with it that she literally had three bowls of the ramen on this flight. Shortly before landing, they served the final meal of the flight, which was excellent once again. Just like during our first meal, I went with the Japanese cuisine while Serge tried out the international option. Serge's meal was a beef and spinach lasagna, while mine was mackerel and Japanese plum with rice, plus a side of konjac noodles with spicy fish roe. And soon it was time to land in Tokyo and from there fly on to Jakarta. Don't worry though, this video is far from over. I'm going to show you what it was like flying back from Tokyo in a window seat, and we still need to go over the big mistake you need to avoid when booking ANA business class. Let's talk about the ground experience when you fly out of Tokyo's Haneda Airport. 
business class passengers have access to this ANA lounge. In addition to the hot and cold options at the buffet, there's also a noodle bar offering a variety of ramen made to order. And here's a little insider tip for you. Walk all the way to the end of the lounge. It's much more quiet back there. Plus there's a whole other food area there, which is much less crowded than the one in the front. On the return flight from Tokyo to New York, Serge and I both had window seats. I'd say that if you want the ultimate experience on the room, a window seat is definitely the way to go. Being able to look out of a window during a flight just never gets old for me. Plus, you'll get to play with the window shades. Seriously though, I could do this all day long. As you've seen throughout this video, the in-flight experience on ANA is pretty extraordinary. I loved the food and the enormous seat. Plus, ANA definitely has the nicest cabin crew ever. They were so kind and friendly and helpful. And you could see this even in the flight attendants' interactions with each other. But the ANA experience is definitely not perfect. If you have big feet like Surge, the footwell still doesn't offer much vertical space. And as spacious as the seat is, there's not a whole lot of stowage or counter space. Also, if I'm gonna be nitpicky, I thought that ANA skimped in a few specific areas, which took away from the premium feel of the experience. For example, instead of hot towels, we got moist towelettes. The paper quality of the menu was quite poor, and the cocktail napkins felt cheap. The headphones were also not at all what I'd expect on a business class flight. They were pretty flimsy and barely noise canceling. Yes, in the bigger scheme of things, these are just details. But when it comes to luxury experiences, it's all about the details. And it's details like these that can either add to or take away from the premium feeling. So what's the big mistake to avoid when booking a a business class? Well, not every a a business class flight offers the room. As of now, this particular business class product, I believe is only available on the New York to Tokyo and Los Angeles to Tokyo routes. If you book other ANA business class flights out of the mainland US, you'll typically be in either this older 777 business class product or on the 787 business class product, which we flew between Tokyo and Jakarta. These are not terrible, but the hard product is obviously not as luxe as the room. So how much do we pay for these flights? Well, last July, we came across an amazing fare sale. So we jumped on the deal and paid just $2,680.32 per person. To put that into perspective, I priced out the exact itinerary we flew. And from now until the end of the year, the fares range from $6,000 to $10,000 per person. I mentioned earlier that luxury experiences are all about the details. And there's one airline that has incorporated a totally unique detail into its business class experience. So check out this video where I show you what it is and how it will make your next trip to Europe that much more special. 